Okay, whenever you're ready. Introduction. Okay, so I need to introduce myself. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Charles Gordon, um, writer of Secrets of Empowerment, and yeah, I can silence that. Right. Yeah, well. yeah, I want to start again. What happened was I saw a guy driving a Porsche at the time. It was a 944 Turbo. I remember it very, very well. Um, he went on to become a very good friend and is still a very good friend to today. Um, but he had this Porsche. I was broke and hungry and wanted to make money. So I saw the guy and said to him, look, how did you get that? And he said to me, I work in property. And after being that, that during being the time of the research period of everything that I was looking at, I thought, well, property it is, and it's a sign. This is what I've got to do. A lot of people are governed by fear. We're controlled by fear. You're, you're, you wake up in the morning and oh, shit, if I don't pay my TV license, they're going to come and find me. If I don't pay my parking fine, they're going to come and get me. And basically what society does is it uses fear to control people. It uses fear and indoctrinates fear into us to stop us believing that we can do certain things when really we can. People don't want fear in their lives and they don't want to, they don't want to feel pain in their lives so they stay away from them as best they can. The only, way to, the only way to achieve certain goals is to eliminate the fear. You can't fear it. You have to just say, do you know what, whatever happens, happens. And there's a billion people out there who are all waiting to see you fail in any capacity. You know, it's just so that they can feel better about their failure. So you've got to have that tunnel vision, focus on what your objectives are, and just keep going. I've always believed that in life, there's always a hard way to do things, and there's a longer way to do things, and then there's the shortest distance. And for some strange reason, something that's always been unknown to me, I've never been able to identify it or understand it or work it out, but people in life always seem to look for the most complicated route to the end result. Whereas my philosophy has always been quite simple. Work out what your objective is. Once you know what your objective is, think all the way back to the beginning of that goal and then just carry yourself through it. There's no point in overcomplicating it. There's no point in, in factoring in tangents that may not become a part of the equation. And you've almost literally got to put your blinkers on and go for it. So self-belief. I mean, self-belief for me is what's made this whole... It's made the whole journey possible in the sense that from where I'm coming from, I don't believe I can fail at anything. And I don't know, as you're a child, I think there's a, when you see children, they come out of school and they've got that I can do anything philosophy. And as they go through life, it, it almost gets beaten out of them bit by bit and they kind of lose their self-confidence. And by the time, you get, the time they get to 40 or 50 years old, they're a completely different animal to, to what they were when they were 19 or 20. If you're going to get advice from anyone in the game, always make sure that it's someone who's done it before because 90% of the population of the world are negative. So they will find a million excuses why you can't achieve your objective. Whereas there's only 10% out there who are positive and they're the ones that have been successful and have done things in the past. If you don't know, don't pretend to know. I think in life and, and everything, I mean, I've, I've drawn reference to a section in the book there which says qualify your source of information because what I found is that in life there's too many people that are prepared to give too much advice about things and in fairness don't actually have a clue. If you're prepared to sacrifice everything, then, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it, could, it could be fruitful and fun. <laughs> So if I was to start again in business, what I'd do is I'd first look at, I'd first look at a speculative business, a high risk business, which could potentially get me some money straight away and the highest possible return. Then I'd look at investing in a lower risk business with a stable base to create a cash base. And then once I've established a cash base, I'd build that up, get that to a certain point, and then I'd take it from there and then I'd look at speculative businesses again. And then that's ultimately where you, where you make the big money. As I've gotten older, and obviously with, with, the, with the elements of financial freedom, it's led to me buying lots of cars, lots of houses, and just generally having a good life and a good time. I, I go away to see the fights in Vegas and just chill out with my friends and sometimes even pay for my friends to go on holiday. So it's, um, I think the overall game is just to, it's to enjoy it as well. It's to understand that it's not just all about making money. It's about having a good time and enjoying it. So I, I yeah, I, I mean, I... I do a lot, I, I do the car thing in the sense that, God, 
literally, I mean, my last, the last, the last car I bought was the Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, which is on the back of my book because that's my toy and I like it.